This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. It is my pleasure to introduce uh, our longtable speaker this afternoon, Simona Kalin, uh, who I only had the pleasure of meeting in person just, uh, just in March recently, who organized a really great conference in Munich. Um, so Simona is a researcher at the Commission für Alte Geschichte und Epigraphik at the Deutsches Archäologische Institut in Munich and also co-editor of the journal Chiron. And she was previously a postdoc at the Institute for Numismatik und Geltgeschichte at the University of Vienna. Um, she is the author of several articles and also a book uh, called uh, Parazema Officiella Symbola Griechische Poles und Bundesstaaten, which translates to the official symbols of the Greek polis and uh, states. Uh, and today she's talking about uh, coin finds from Olympia. So with that, I'll hand it over to Zimona. Thank you again for, for uh, sharing your time with us today. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, or rather good evening in Germany. <laughs> um, to, uh, to everybody, uh, good afternoon, uh, dear colleagues and um, Ladies and gentlemen, before I start, I would like to thank the organizers of this lecture, especially Dr. Nathan Elkins and the American Numismatic Society for inviting me. It's an honor and a pleasure for me to talk today about coin finds from Olympia, um, the analysis from 1875 to the present. This is a report on my project on the coins found at Olympia, which I have been working on since 2021. So of course it is still work in progress. My talk of about 45 minutes today is divided into four parts. In the first part, I would like to uh, briefly recapitulate the excavation history of a sanctuary of Zeus at Olympia so that one can better classify the history of research on the coin finds. This is then part two of my talk. In part three, I will present the status quo of numismatic research and at the end, introduce to the present project and give an outlook on what I plan to do in the near future. So first, the excavation history of Olympia. For orientation, I show the location of Olympia on the Western Peloponnese, although I can assume that you all know where the most important Greek century of Zeus was located. It was a Panhellenic century that was almost entirely under the control of the polis Elis, some 60 kilometers away from Olympia. Elis minted civic coins, many of which refer to Olympia, as we shall see in a minute. You are per, uh, perhaps well aware of a site plan of a sanctuary, where the games in honor of Zeus Olympias were held every four years. We can see his head and his sacred animal, the eagle, on the didrachma of Elis here on the right of a slide. The beginning of a cult of Zeus can be traced back to the 11th century BC in Olympia at a site where a prehistoric tumulus and a prehistoric settlement can be, could be proven. According to the votive offerings, a supra-regional sanctuary already existed at this site in the 8th century BC. In the 5th century BC, the temple of Zeus with a famous cult image was built. You can see the ruins of the temple here in the middle of the photo and here once again in an aerial photo. And the already mentioned cult image is also struck on coins of, from Elis, but only during the Roman imperial period, beginning in the time of Hadrian. At the end of the fourth century AD, the pagan cults were banned by Theodosius, but the games, both beginning as traditionally dated to 776 BC, 
seem to have been taken place um, until around 420 AD. There is evidence of a rural settlement at the site in the 5th century AD, but the site became deserted from the 6th century AD onwards, following earthquakes and flooding of the river Alphaios. So it was not until the 18th century that Olympia was rediscovered by the Briton Richard Chandler. The engraving here gives us an impression where the sanctuary was located in the state of 1829. You can see the hill of Cronos on the right. And the farmer here, I hope you can see it, um, cultivating his field here shows you what was going on in Olympia at that time. At the beginning of the 19th century, the first exploration were carried out by English and German research travelers, but it was not until 1829 that French excavations almost completely uncovered the Temple of Zeus. The large systematic excavations were carried out from 1875 by German archaeologists. And in just a few years during the so-called old excavation, they uncovered an area of 7.5 hectare, as we see here in a photo from around 1882. The alluvial layer, several meters high, which the river Alfayas had laid over the monuments for centuries, can also be seen very clearly in the background of this photo. And you see the river Alfayas in the background before the mountains as well, in front of the mountains as well. This old excavation began with a complete uncovering of a temple of Zeus and worked way way with test trenches to the other buildings, which were known from the description of the ancient author Pausanias. At the end of the old excavation, in 1881, this general plan was created. Further excavation listed here um, then took place initially under the direction of Wilhelm Dörpfeld. This was 1906 until 1929, followed by the new excavation from the 30s to the 60s and the uh, excavation of the recent decades. Compared to the spectacular pediment figures and round sculptures and the numerous bronze offerings, the coins, which were mostly poor preserved and mainly minted from bronze, had a rather shadowy existence in the history of excavations. I will limit myself here to show a few examples. Um, for example, the Hermes uh, of Praxiteles, by the way, was recovered as early as 1877. And these four bronze objects are representative of thousands of bronze figurines, tripods and weapons found in Olympia. Coins were also found in large numbers. And so I come to the second part of my talk, the history of a research on the coin finds. Coins have been found since the first weeks of the old excavation. The excavation diary um, of the old excavation, this is the um, page here on the left, shows that the first coin was found at a crepice of, uh, on October the 15th in 1875, 11 days after the excavation began. You see here on the left side the relevant page of the diary, and on the right, a transcript of it, and marked in red the short mention of the first coin. Um, by the way, the excavation diaries from the first two years of the old excavation are now um, online available as scans, as well as transcript via the website of the German Archaeological Institute. This first coin, um, as we can read in the inventory book 
Here also the original page on the left and the transcript on the right. This coin was a bronze coin, but it was unidentifiable uh, and it, get, uh, it got the number num1 num for numus. But at least the excavators determined and recorded the diameter of 14 millimeters, also here in the inventory book. I would like to show you this first coin in a photo, but I will come back to why this is not possible. During the old excavation, exactly 2,935 coins were recorded in the coin inventory books, some of which are now kept in the museum in Olympia, in the Numismatic Museum in Athens, and in the coin cabinet in Berlin. I will come back to these different collections uh, in a minute. However, the 2,935 coins are not the total number of coins found at that time, as the inventory books only exist for the first years until 1879, and not for the last two years of the old excavation. Um, but further coin finds are recorded in the excavation diaries of these years, but not individually, coin by coin, but mostly with collective details as a dozen or several copper coins, etc. So we have uh, um, estimated a total of approximately 6,550 specimens. Certainly, this is not a lot for this large excavation area, but considering the excavation practice at that time, it is uh, certainly a good rate, I think. The first coin find, as well as the majority of coins found in the following decades, are still unpublished today. Why is this the case? A first indication can be found in the first report on the excavation at Olympia by Emil Kunze from 1937. Um, I quote first in German. Das vorhandene Material lässt bei näherer Prüfung weder durch Umfang noch durch Bedeutung eine spezielle Bearbeitung und Veröffentlichung gerechtfertigt erscheinen. In English. The existing material does not seem to justify on closer examination, either by extent or by significance, a special treatment and publication. The reason for this view was certainly the poor state of preservation of the coins and the disproportion between silver and bronze coins. Almost only bronze coins were found in Olympia. So I show you a, a random example. This is a, a bronze coin from uh, the, the city of Corinth. We see on the um, obverse on the right, um, a Pegasus to the left, and on the reverse on the, uh, on the right, um, a, a trident. So, and this is, I hope you can see this, because this is one of the better preserved uh, specimens in uh, Olympia, from Olympia. However, already in the following year, this is uh, 1938, a single find was published in the second Olympia report, even though on just one and a half pages, because um, a certain importance uh, was ascribed to this coin as a well-preserved one and a very early one from Elis. And in this report of uh, 1938, However, the disproportion between well and poorly preserved coins and between silver and bronze coins in Olympia was again pointed out, which led to the refusal of an overall publication. Even though it is also mentioned in this report that poorly preserved coins were valuable for dating as well. These statements clearly show the importance, or perhaps rather the disregret, of fine numismatics in the early decades of large-scale excavations like Olympia, which is certainly also valid beyond Olympia and corresponded to the spirit of the times and the state of research. The idea 
that it was not worthwhile to work on all coin finds probably discouraged efforts to publish them in their entirety at the time. And fortunately, numismatic research has since moved away from this view. Find numismatics has developed considerably in recent decades in particular. So the supposed turning point came at the beginning of the 1960s. Dr. Peter Robert Franke, who was soon to become chair of ancient history at the University of Saarbrücken in Germany, took over the work on the Olympian coins. He had been sent to the, de uh, to the German um, department in Athens for a year as a foreign consultant and took over the editing of the Olympian coins. The inscription on the wooden boxes here and on the paper bags of the coins in the bronze deposit in Olympia still show his careful handwriting. Franke's achievements at Olympia cannot be overestimated. He apparently identified several thousand poorly preserved coins on his own, obviously without assistance, over the course of a few years in several campaigns. Franke's legacy on Olympia is now in the Berlin coin cabinet, including a folder with a handwritten list of a catalog of coins found at Olympia, plaster casts, and photographs of selected specimens. In addition, two lecture manu manuscripts by Franke were kept, are kept in the Bavarian State Coin Collection in Munich. In them, there are references to Franke's planned publication of the material. As you can see here, in one he states that there are 18,000 coins, here 60,000, um, has been corrected to 80,000, and another 30,000 coins from late antique hoards. He also states that uh, the few hundred silver coins, um, 280 Greek and 340 Roman, which, which means approximately 3% uh, of the overall number, whereby a Hellenistic hoard, I must um, add, was probably not counted here by him. Franke also mentions that he was entrusted with the editing in 1961 and that the publication was planned for the year 1975, although the year was also changed here uh, before it was um, uh, 1972. So I think the manuscripts uh, dates from 1971 or even earlier. Um, and there is also um, a legacy of Franke with documents and plaster cards in the Cast Museum at the Munich Universi University. Um, here, uh, um, the first examination has taken place but a more detailed study is still pending on that. And here you see um, just the first page of, uh, uh, of documents on a hoard found from Byzantine times. However, the complete publication mentioned by Franke was never realized before he passed away in 2019. There are only a few contributions by Franke that offer, offer off overviews or single coin types from ELIS. Here you see the title pages of these articles. And we move on to the index cards, uh, which are kept in the Olympia Museum and they go also back to Franke. These continued to be kept after Franke's involvement in Olympia until they were replaced by the computer-based documentation in the 1990s. The index cards contain the information that is also handwritten on the coin bags in Olympia in the museum and in Franke's handwritten list in Berlin. What I now like to show at this point is the numbering. AB 
is the abbreviation for the old excavation. And 33 is the number given by Franke. Franke sorted the coins from the different excavations or the excavation sections according to the mints of the coins. That means first he starts with all the coins from Elis, then the other mints of the Peloponnesian, and so on. And then he numbered the sorting consecutively from one on and noted it on the paper bags so that this coin AB33 can easily be found in the depot. The, it is a bronze coin from Elis from the third or, or second century BC. And we see on the obverse a head of Apollo and on the reverse a Zeus with eagle and thunderbolt. So I have to add that the description on the index card by Franke is incorrect because he um, said it was a head with a radiate crown, but it's, it is probably a head of Apollo with a tania. So far, so good. But there is no longer a link to the excavator's inventory book number, which means what we don't know where exactly the coins were found just from the old excavation. I had hoped to find a concordance list in Franke's legacy, but uh, that would provide a link to the excavations, but unfortunately not. We don't know if in the 1960s the focus of numismatic research was not yet placed on the significance of the fine spots, or if the information was already lost at the time of Franke. So the link today no longer exists. Thus, the first coin find in Olympia, since it was described as completely unidentifiable, will also have to remain anonymous. It is certainly one of the many hundreds um, from the cigarette boxes in which Franke had kept the unidentifiable coins from all the excavation sectors together. But there is hope. Because the inventory books of the coins provide not only the diameter of the coins in many of the entries, but also details of the coin images and the mint insofar as they were recognized by the excavators in the 19th century. And with this information, I have now my, made my third attempts to identify the coins and can say that this is at least possible for the better preserved coins and above all for individual specimens or coin types in small numbers. So just two examples. Only one coin of Honorius was found during the old excavation. So the inventory book. One such coin is in the bronze depot in Olympia. In this respect, the coin AB327 can be identified with num Numus 178 from the inventory book and was first found on the east side of a stepped building. The diameter of AB 327 is around 1.13 1 centi 1 .13 centimeters, so significantly less than the coin in the inventory book, which could be due to cleaning or restoration in later times. A more clear example is the silver coin of Philip II. This is Num 2018, which can be identified with a specimen in the Berlin coin cabinet on the basis of the inscription, the diameter and the type. So we know now that the specimen in Berlin has a fine spot in the Prytaneion in Olympia. On the same day, you can see that uh, on the uh, 15 um, in the table on the left, 
Um, on the same day, this is February the 15th in 1879, a number of other silver coins, both of Philip II and of Aegina, were found here, so that it must be a small hoard. Because silver coins, uh, as I mentioned already, are rather rare in Olympia, and the same find spot suggests that these coins belong together. Aliki Mustaka, I will soon come to her again, has already noticed this and will present this hoard in a future article. This hoard probably includes also these three tetradrachmas of Philip II from the Numismatic Museum of Athens because of their indication of a fine spot Olympia, where they were found in Olympia as well. Celicas published them in 2016, but gives a wrong find date. He mentioned February the 3rd, but there were no excavations since it was a Sunday, the 3rd of February. So these coins must have been found also on February the 15th in 1879 and belonged to the same hoard. As you can see from these examples, the identification and attribution of the inventory book numbers leads to further findings and to further questions. I'm sure I don't need to tell you that the exact fine spot or fine context is important for the scientific interpretation of, the, of a coin find. However, the fine spot plays another role in my institute's research. The old excavation from 8075 until 8081 is being proceed in its entirety and made available in an online tool. This is called IDIE field and is accessible via our website. All finds from the excavation diaries and inventory books are entered there and should be indicated with details of a current depository and inventory number. And of course, it would be good if this could be done for as many coins as possible. Here you see the start page of the Olympia online project. And uh, within uh, you find the list of finds with also 179 coins. And if we open this list of coins, um, you can see the list on the left and you see the map with the fine spots, if they could be reconstructed. And if we choose, for example, Numus 26, you can see you get all the information available. Uh, this is on the left side here. And in this case, including also a drawing taken from the um, excavation diary is added here. And um, um, it would be best if we have photos of the photos uh, of the coins as well in near future. In addition to the normal numismatic analysis, this project is a further reason to attempt to attribute the coins of the old excavation to the um, later and newer numbers of Franke. And so I come to the status quo of the numismatic research. Um, here you can see a list of the publications so far, um, because occasionally the, coin found, uh, the coins found in certain excavation areas or hoards have been published yet. First to mention are uh, is the article of Aliki Mustaka, um, which uh, was published in 1999 with the coin finds of a Southeast excavation. And it provides a catalog of 528 coins and their interpretation. And Aliki Mustaka also uh, studied the coins from Olympia and the Numismatic Museum at Athens. Um, where some of the coins from the old excavation were transferred to in the 19th century. And this is uh, her article from the year 
2021. Already in the year uh, 1995, um, Thomas Fölling uh, published an early Byzantine hoard from Olympia, which was recovered in 1877. Unfortunately, it is not clear where the hoard is located today, because Fölling only worked with the excavation diaries. He also lists further uh, 11 early Byzantine hoards from Olympia, Woe's fate is also unclear. And um, also to mention is a publication of Werner Fuchs um, on the Leonie Dion. And um, he added also the coin finds from the Leonie Dion, but only the most important and interesting specimens. So not all coins from the Leonie Dion are published yet. A complete publication of all coins was no longer pursued and is now to be tackled. Current, uh, current uh, researchers working on the Olympian coin finds are, um, we already mentioned, Aliki Mustaka. She uh, will publish together with Catherine Grandjean um, the so-called Badekasse, the bath cash box, uh, this is the hoard of over 1,000 Hellenistic silver coins. And um, the colleague Lilian de Angelo Laki is responsible for the coin finds um, from the excavation of Professor Zinn and Professor Zenf. That means the excavation uh, from the 1980s onwards. In addition, the project team of Andreas Gutsfeld and Stefan Lehmann has recorded the coin finds in, at Olympia as well. Um, the projects were the romanization of Greek centuries of Olympia and Samos in the early imperial period and Olympia in late antiquity. And their former project member Timo Stingel kindly provided me with database entries, which are basically Franke's handwritten notes, which now served as a digital basis for my future work. A complete presentation and publication of a numismatic material was probably never intended by Gutsfeld and Lehmann, but only the interpretation of the coins with regard to the um, questions of their projects. So I walk further to my current project and the outlook. My work on site so far has been as follows. Until 2021, the coins were stored in their paper bags in wooden find boxes. And we were moved to a fireproof slide cabinet. In those subdivisions, the paper bags fits perfectly. This is how the current storage looks like. In the right picture, you see uh, a late antique hoard of approximately uh, 9,200 coins, which is now also stored in the slide cabinet. This is the hoard find for which I found the list in Franke's le uh, legacy, but which still needs to uh, be further studied. And I was able in 2021 to take a current inventory. So there are approximately 90,500 coins stored in the bronze depot in Olympia in the museum. Even before the first campaign in uh, 2021, a mobile photo system was purchased by our commission, which enables computer edit and fast recording in highest quality. We now also have a software add-on that automatically measures the diameter and stores it in the photo's metadata uh, meta so that it can be automatically entered into the database as soon as the photos are inserted. This makes work easier and saves a lot of time. In the uh, 2022 campaign, um, no, the 2022 campaign lasted two weeks during I was supported by, by my student assistant Fabienne Karl. Together we were able to check, correct, 
and complete the descriptions and determinations of 337 coins from the old excavation by Franke. And uh, the, photo, um, the coins were also photographed in that time. In the 2023 campaign, which lasted four weeks, I was able to check and document around 1,000 coins together with two students, again Fabienne Karl and Maya Lerner from Vienna. The aim of the new documentation and um, mainly the digital documentation of the coin, coins is a publication in form of an online database. The models for this are the coin databases for Pergamon and Prieni, which were created in cooperation with the coin cabinet in Berlin and our commission. Here you see a screenshot of the start site of the uh, Pergamon database. And here just an example for a coin found at Prieni. And you can see all the catalog um, data um, as it is given in the online database. The advantages of this database system are, we use the established database system MK Edit of the Berlin Coin Cabinet. The data records are automatically imported and linked to the Berlin online catalog and other international platforms for ancient coin types. Our database for Olympia is already programmed. However, a final test run has to be carried out so that the online version can hopefully be realized within the next few months. Here you see a screenshot of the coins already cataloged from Olympia just the start page at the moment, and um, one example of a coin of Constantinus the first. Um, just here, uh, an overview how it will be, uh, how it will look like uh, in a few months, hopefully. Um, we started to fill in the around five hundred fifty coins that were transferred from the old excavation to the Berlin coin cabinet. These were studied um, in, 2000, uh, in, in 2013 in uh, Constanze Stingel's master thesis. The Berlin inventory has been checked by myself in recent years and entered into the database. But further research is needed into the total number of these coins. According to the um, Berlin Coin Cabinet's accession books from 1919, this is the entry, only 132 coins from Olympia were transferred. In addition, however, and this is the last sentence of this entry, there is an undetermined number of doublets and coins that were to be melted down. This was not unusual for that time, as the large museums often only wanted to keep one example of a coin type and could choose the best specimen. Mrs. Stingel's work, however, includes 550 coins. So we have to uh, go a step further because before the coins were inventorized in the coin cabinet, they were stored in the old museum in Berlin. All finds, that means doublets as agreed in the treaty between Greece and Germany, all finds from Olympia went there to the old museum. And we have a list of the doublets of the old museums that contain 311 coins. But among them are curious numbers. Some of the numbers, as here the 4,888, are higher than the ones in the coin inventory book uh, from Olympia. This must therefore have been continued 
but the coin inventory books of the last two years are no longer available today. Other numbers, and these are the next pages, other numbers do not match the coin inventory book numbers, especially two digit numbers assigned to late antique coins. So the question that arises is, where were others inventory we don't know yet? As you can see, there are still some questions and my research in the archives is not over yet. Now I think it's time for an overview of the total inventory. So there are approximately 90,500 coins in the bronze depot in Olympia in the museum, plus around 550 coins in the coin cabinet Berlin, and approximately 2,400 coins in the Numismatic Museum of Athens, which were transferred there before 1885. In addition, there are hoards, approximately around 2,000 uh, late antique coins in the coin cabinet Berlin as well. And maybe these have a connection to the um, already mentioned um, late antique coins, uh, coin hoards, for, um, which were published by Fölling. And that brings me, oh, excuse me, that brings me to the end of my talk. As my remarks should have made clear, the study of coins found at Olympia is complex and wide ranging. It goes beyond the usual identification of coin types and includes the excavation history of the last century and a half. The aim is to catalog and to publish the inventory of a museum in Olympia and the coin cabinet Berlin in an online database. Of course, this also includes research into where the coins are kept today and how they got there. Once the individual finds have been published, the next step will be to identify and analyze the hoards. The overall aim is to make a contribution to find numismatics in general. By reconstructing the find spots, dating of excavation finds and layers should be made possible. More precise dating may also make it possible to better determine the chronology of coin series of other cities found in Olympia. And finally, the evaluation of the coins found at Olympia should contribute to the reconstruction of coin circulation in the Peloponnese as a whole. And thank you for your attention. Uh, Simona, thank you very much for that really great uh, and fantastic presentation on the coin finds from Olympia. Uh, at this point in time, I'd like to open it up uh, for questions from our audience. Uh, feel free to unmute yourself and ask any questions. Okay, it's a little shy of a group, so I guess I will ask the first question. Um, so um, ha, ha, I, I gather, and correct me if I'm wrong, your your long term goal is to make an online database of all of the uh, coin finds from Olympia. But uh, clearly, you've studied these intensively. Um, how do these coin finds compare? You mentioned uh, coin circulation at the end. How do these coin finds from Olympia compare to the types of coins we find from uh, other Greek sanctuaries, for example, like at Noumea, where we have the volume published by uh, Knapp, Knapp and McIsaac? Um, do you see very different kinds of coins or um, I so I guess so, but uh, uh, yes. I think it's a bit too too early to to ask uh, about the coin types at the moment because um, we have 
I guess we have about 10% at the moment worked on in the last two years. So I think we need more time <laughs> to work on all the other coin finds uh, from Olympia to, to get to a conclusion and to, to be able to compare it to other sites. Um, yes, at the moment I can say um, the material I have already worked on um, seems to have a, a, a big portion from uh, from Elis, but that's not uh, that that was respectable. So um, that is the only thing I can say. We have a lot of material from Elis, and we have a lot of material from the next cities on the Peloponnese. We don't have so much coins from cities which are far far away from Olympia and we have no material from um, Italy uh, not much material from Italy and uh, especially from South Italy and from uh, Sicily um, mm. we know that we have um, good connections from these cities in Sicily to Olympia in um, archaic times um, but we have no material uh, from these cities in, in the coin finds. Not yet. So it's, uh, uh, I think I can say more about it uh, in a few years. I hope so if we have uh, checked more of the material. Okay. Much work still to be done. Yes, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? If I could uh, jump in, uh, uh, Martin Beckman here. Thank you. That's a very interesting, uh, interesting talk. I'm really curious about how much stratigraphic information you have for these uh, finds. Yes, a good question. Thank you. Um, uh, we we started uh, in chronological order from the excavation. Sections. So we started with the material found in the 19th century, and we have not so many information about um, the stratigraphy and the layers. Um, last year, we did uh, the excavations from the 1930s, um, and we had just a few information where the coins were found exactly. But um, it's it's still the task to to compare it with the um, excavation diaries to see if we have further information about the layers there, uh, because we have them not recorded on the paperbacks and not recorded on the index cards. So this is still a point I have to check out, and I hope that it will get better within the next years and the next campaigns. If we can uh, come to the excavations uh, from the from the recent decades and from later times, so I hope that we have more information then, because the practice of the excavation was developed in that time. So um, I guess we have more information then, but especially for the old excavation and the excavation in the early twentieth century, we have less information, too less, I think. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there other questions? You had mentioned the recent excavations. Uh, I'm not sure ex um, how extensive the recent excavations are or the new excavations. Um, do you have a sense of approximately how many coins are, are coming up each year in the new excavations? Um, at the moment, there are not uh, there are no current excavations uh, by the German team in Olympia. I, I think there was an excavation from the uh, Greek colleagues in the last years, um, but I'm not responsible for for that material. And um, um, the recent excavation with coin finds were the excavation of uh, Professor Zenf and uh, before that Professor Zinn, and um, 
This is the colleague uh, Lilian Delaki Angelo responsible for, and um, I think these coins, the amount is about um, a few hundreds she's working on. So um, they they changed the, the excavation practice from the whole area to more uh, to to spotlight a, a, or to to uh, to to concentrate on a. Um, smaller section of excavation so it's it's uh, uh, clear that there that there there are not so many coins found like in the years or in the decades before 